If you've got a brand new PC with pre-installed junk, or you've just built a custom PC, or your PC might be running a little bit slower than usual, then it may be time for a new custom Windows 10 install. Whether you want an out of the box install or want to modify and create your own custom Windows installer, the first step is to download a fresh, up-to-date Windows ISO disk image file. This saves you time and bandwidth on downloading those large previous feature updates that you won't have to install anymore. There are two options, however, for getting a Windows ISO. Here at Tech yes City, we've got a custom ISO, which we trim ourselves to get rid of the unnecessary Windows apps and telemetry, which actually helps boost FPS through less RAM and CPU usage. We're planning on adding much more to it down the line, but in the meantime, I'll leave a link in the description below. And the best thing about this install is, since it's from the tech yes man, you know you can trust it. So straight away, you can just go to Google and search Windows 10 ISO and click on the link from www.microsoft.com. Don't click on any WW2 or WW3 links. And when you're on the official Microsoft website, click on Download Media Creation Tool. Once that's downloaded, open it, accept the end user license agreement. Here is the first option you'll need to change. Swap it from upgrade this PC now to create installation media, USB flash drive, DVD, or ISO for another PC. Now, when prompted with your Windows install options, you can most likely change the architecture to 64-bit because it's so common nowadays. Or if you aren't sure, then you can always set it to both. But that will of course result in actually a much larger installation disk file size, which of course could set you back a few more dollars. Though, for the majority of computers, the recommended settings are going to be absolutely fine, so I recommend just sticking with them. The next step is just choosing where you want the ISO to be downloaded to. You can put it on the desktop or anywhere where you can find this ISO file easily on the first folder of the C drive, for example. Though while that's downloading, you may need to think about activating your Windows 10. If only I knew where to get a Windows 10 installation key for, oh, today's video sponsor, SCD Keys has you covered with $12 Windows 10 Pro Key License. These are the legitimate retail Windows key licenses. I've actually checked these out before, called Microsoft directly, and they check out fine. Meaning once you've activated Windows, it's gonna remain activated to that motherboard that you tie it to forever. Now, if you use the coupon code BFTYC on checkout, you can get 30% off this Windows 10 key price, making it around $12. Once you've got one of these keys, all you have to then do is get that key from the website from scdkeys.com, grab it, and you can either do this two ways. When you first install Windows, you can put this key in straight away and it'll activate Windows. You're done, you're finished. So to do this second method, you just click on the start menu, then go to the settings cogwheel, and then when we're in settings, we go to update and security, and then we left click on activation, and then we left click on change product key, and then we can insert our new product key here, and then click OK, and it should activate. I'll put the link in the description below if you guys wanna get this. Let's get back to the video. So now that your download of the ISO is done, you're gonna to wanna to get a bootable, creatable program such as Rufus. I personally love using Rufus. It's straightforward, it's free to use. There's no costs involved. It's like the one built into the media creation tool from Microsoft, but it has more options to tinker with and it is more reliable, especially for custom installs. So download the Rufus application from rufus.ie, insert the USB you want to make your Windows installer on. Something to note is that the tool will need to delete everything on the drive in order to create the petitions needed to be marked as bootable. But after the Windows install is finished, you can still add files to the USB like a normal drive. This is handy for copying drivers, Chrome installer for example, or whatever else you might need on a fresh install of Windows. So select the ISO you just downloaded, whether it's a Tech yes City version or one that you've customized yourself, and you may wanna change the petition scheme too. This is up to you. It's optional. GPT is newer and designed for non-CSM UEFI. It has better data integrity and theoretically supports larger volumes, which include RAID arrays. 
But if you're installing on older machines, you will need an MBR scheme, which works on both BIOS or UEFI with CSM enabled. You are now ready to boot from your USB drive. So put the USB in the computer you want to either install to, or if you're using an older, slower version, reinstall to. It can even be the same computer you made the installer on, turn off the computer and then turn the computer back on and immediately repeatedly start pressing the delete or F2 key until you see a menu come up. Just bear in mind if you're booting up a PC and it says memory configuration and it hasn't booted to BIOS yet, you may need to keep pressing these keys until you get to a BIOS menu. Once you're in the menu called your BIOS, if you have a button that says advanced settings, then press that. Either way, navigate to the exit tab and see if there is a boot override option. If your USB shows up and your motherboard has this feature, just press it and your computer will reboot to the USB installer. If you don't have a boot override option, however, navigate to your boot tab, or if you don't have a boot tab, there will likely be a storage option. It may also be under the advanced tab. From there, you need to change your USB to the highest priority, priority one, with your SSD second if you have one, and your hard drives and other devices below that. You may need to use your page up, page down keys on the numpad, your mouse or arrow keys, depending on your model of BIOS. Once that's done, navigate back to your exit tab and choose save or something along those lines of save and exit. And if all that is done properly, you should now see a Windows loading icon with the little circle running around in circles, followed by a purple screen. If not, then something hasn't worked. Try and get a friend to help or ask for some help from somewhere else. Once you're on the purple screen, click next, install now until you get an upgrade or a custom install. Click custom install. If your drive already has Windows on it, you'll need to delete all the petitions for that drive. So make sure you back up your data before you do this, however, this is an important point. So before you install any windows on a drive with files already on it, do make sure you back up important files. You can see the drive number to make sure you're not deleting data from other drives too. Or if you're a skilled user, you can press Shift and F10 to open up command prompt and then use the disk part tool to clean and convert drives to either MBR or GPT manually. Once that's done, click the drive and click next. Once the installer finishes copying, it will tell you that you need to restart. Now, if you're on an older machine, with especially a non-UEFI BIOS, make sure that you pull the USB stick out of the computer at this time, and then after that, let the computer restart, and that's it. Some waiting, some rebooting, you'll get to custom call your PC whatever you want, you can set a password in here, even connect to the internet and download some updates if you want to, but voila, you've now installed Windows. And at this point in time, I'd normally tell you guys to follow the optimization guides I've made over the years to disable as much telemetry and useless options as possible. But if you wanna make a custom install to save yourself time from doing these optimization guides or pretty much rip out all this useless bloatware and privacy infringing modules from the roots, we'll go back to where we downloaded the Windows 10 ISO and we'll go from there. So these next steps we're going down are for advanced users and we've already gone down this route for you guys. So if you wanna download a version of Windows 10 that has done pretty much cut out all the crap and it's just left with a nice, beautiful gaming version of Windows 10, then we'll put the link in the description below. But if you wanna understand the science behind it, even just customize your own options within Windows 10, then let's get onto it. For this, you'll need 7-Zip to extract the file and get all the archives out from within on the MSMG toolkit and make sure the name of the folder doesn't have any spaces. Next, copy the Windows ISO to the DVD folder and extract it to the same folder using 7-Zip. Once that's done, go back to the main MSMG toolkit folder and open start.cmd and click yes to the administrator rights pop-up. Press the A key to accept the end user license agreement. After all the folders are loaded, press any key, then press one to enter the source menu. Then after that, press seven to extract source from custom Windows ESD image. Select the additions you plan on installing. For me, I'm going to press six and then enter because I only use Windows 10 Pro keys and I want the installer to be more streamlined to reflect that. You can press the asterisk to select all additions if you aren't sure. And once that's done, go to the main menu by pressing any key. Once you're there, you can press seven 
to enter the tools menu and then one to enter the WIM manager. From here, you can press A to display all the additions you've got in the folder, press B to rename an addition, C to delete any additions you don't need like the education or end versions and press X when you're done. Go back to the source menu and press one to select source from DVD folder. Once that's done, go back to the main menu. If you have any specific drivers or language packs, you need then press two to integrate them. You will need to download the language packs from the MSMG Toolkit website. Now you can integrate any Windows feature you want to be pre-installed. The only ones I would recommend are DirectX 9X and Visual C++ Runtime. But do not install .NET 3.5 now or it will give you problems and errors. All these features you will need to download from the MSMG Toolkit website. Though the next step is an important one. You will need to install Windows updates for your machine. You will need to go to catalog.update.microsoft.com and search for two things. First is servicing stack update Windows 10. The important thing is here is that it's for x64 installs and not ARM64. The second update you need to search for is cumulative update Windows 10. Put those two files in the update slash Windows 10 slash architecture folder and then press Windows updates in the integrate menu. That will take a while. Even on my 10900K, it took a solid 15 minutes. After that's done, you can go to the remove option from the main menu and from there you can press remove windows components and then select windows components and then select whatever you don't need but in my case it's a matter of what little you do need for internet components i disabled adobe flash because it's been disabled in windows anyway but i left the browsers because certain features won't work without it for multimedia, I left first login animation and snipping tool. In privacy, the only option I left on was pin sign-in support, but you may want face recognition, location service, and Wi-Fi network manager, depending on your machine. I turned off everything in the remoting menu. In system, I disabled everything except paint, system restore, backup, and firewall. For system apps, I left content delivery manager, file explorer, Windows store, and Xbox client, because I like to play Forza, but if you don't play anything Xbox or on the Windows Store, then you probably won't need these two so you can get rid of them. In Windows apps, I left alarms and clocks, calculator, desktop app installer, Google VP9, photos, screen sketch, sticky notes, Windows Store, Xbox console companion, and Xbox identity provider. Once you've gone through selecting what you want and don't want, go back and press start removing Windows components. And when you've done that, you now have the option of customizing your Windows install. But I found that this sometimes ended in Windows install not booting, so I wouldn't recommend it. When that's done, go to the main menu, press apply, and then press apply and save changes to source images. And then press no to the do you want to clean up image folder, as it can also cause issues. When that is done, you want to press six to get into the target menu and press one to make a DVD ISO image, choose a name for your USB. And after that, you can press enter and you can choose a name for your ISO file. Cool, done, use Rufus, easy peasy. And that is how you can make a custom Windows 10 install with all the fat cut off and just the components you need. Now we've done this personally around the studio here and it's dropped the RAM utilization down significantly to the point where we've got some not only differences in the Windows utilization on potatoes, for example, if you've only got eight gigabytes of RAM on a system, this is gonna make quite a big difference. But also in terms of FPS, even on higher end machines, you can extract that bit more by just cutting out all this crap that you don't need. But I also found loading some things was just a little bit faster and snappier, but of course that could be my placebo kicking in. But if you guys want the best in terms of Windows 10 install, then I'll put that link in the description below. And I'll also put all the links for the other stuff that we talked about in the description below. But just to prove this to you guys, we're gonna have an upcoming video where we're comparing the Tech Yes version to the default Windows full fat install. Then compare that to a highly requested 
Ghost Spectre install that's been making the rounds on the internet. And we're gonna talk about these three versions, what all the differences are. But if you wanna see that video as soon as it drops here at Tech Air City, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button for us and let us know in the comments section below if you have any questions about today's install of the custom windows, as I love reading you guys, your thoughts and opinions as always. And don't forget, if you guys wanna get a cheap Windows 10 key, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered. And I'll put a link in the description below for you guys. With that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.